Hi, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Megan, here with another video to help you master Google Flights. Last week we talked about filters and features to use while searching in Google Flights, and this week we'll be covering how to actually make a booking. I'll include things to look out for before you commit to purchasing, as well as answering common questions around things like flight tracking, refunds, and third-party booking sites. If you are new to Google Flights, you may want to watch last week's video before diving into this one. Otherwise, let's get started. Next, I'll be walking you through actually making a booking and some of the things you should be looking out for. So what you're seeing here is the total round trip price, but they're just showing you your departure flight and the details of your departure flight. As I mentioned, this is going to be the total flight duration time from when you leave your departure airport to when you arrive on the ground at your final destination. Here it's telling me the airports that I'm going to have layovers at, and these are just the airport codes. You don't need to know what they are. If you just hover over the different codes, you'll be able to see what they each stand for. Before you click anywhere on this bar to select this departure flight, I recommend you go to the drop down arrow and look at the flight details. Here it's showing you that the flight is going to take off at 11 a.m. Note that this is the time it actually takes off into the sky, not the time you need to board. Boarding will be about half an hour to 40 minutes prior to the time listed. So you have to make sure you would be there for 10.30 at the latest. Here it's showing you your departure airport and the airport code. What you see here as travel time is the time that you're actually going to be in the air until the time that you will touch down in Toronto. So it's going to be an hour and 12 minutes of actual flight time. Here is when you will touch down in Toronto, but it's not necessarily the time you will be getting off the plane. You may not be leaving the plane until 10, 15 minutes later than this time, assuming there's no delays. Down here, you see the carrier that you're flying with. You'll see your fare class. You'll see the airline, the airplane make, and then you'll also get your flight code here for anyone that wants to track your flight and your arrival. Google Flights is great down here where they'll let you know in red any special things you should note about the flight they are suggesting to you. In this case, I would actually definitely pay attention because if the flight is going to be delayed by 30 plus minutes and then my layover is only going to be an hour and 13 minutes in Toronto, I may be cutting it close by booking this flight. This is definitely important to look at how long your layover is and never book a flight with shorter than one hour time to get from one flight to the next. Since you're boarding this one half an hour early and you're not actually getting off of this one until about 10 minutes after it arrives, you're not giving yourself very much time if you are booking a flight with a layover of less than one hour. Google Flights has sometimes suggested to me flights with layovers of 30 minutes or 40 minutes. So you definitely wanna check and they won't always notify you with the red writing like they do here. You can also see the features of the flight that you'll be on so you can know what to expect on the right hand side here. And then just go through each of these flights the same way we just went through the first and make sure you understand what the travel time is and then what your layover is going to be. You'll also sometimes see these little plus ones in the corner. That just means that it's going to be the next day. So you're leaving on Monday, February 3rd at 11 a.m. But by the time you take this flight, it's going to be Tuesday, February 4th. And then down here, by the time you actually arrive in Bangkok, it's going to be Wednesday, February 5th. Note that there is a 12 hour time change and all the times that are quoted are going to be in the local time of the airport that you're flying into. So this will be local time for Japan. This will be local time for Bangkok. And here it's going to be local time for Toronto. If you are happy with this flight, scroll back up and click select flight. Now you'll be taken to where you can book your return flight home. This one's not quite so great. It's 33 hours worth of travel time, which is long. If this was too long for you. You could look at putting on the filter for your flight duration, making it lower and then changing the dates to see what better flights you could get. Or you could even just look down here and you can see 23 hours, 26, 25 hours, but you are going to be paying more for those flights. In my case, to look for the cheapest flight, I would travel for 33 hours. I'm going to open it up and then just go through each of these flights the same way we did with our departure. Here it's telling me that the flight is an overnight flight. 
this isn't a problem, it just means that you will probably be sleeping on those uh, five hours and 30 minutes. But it is important to see up here that this says 150. It's on a 24 hour clock. So this is going to be 150 a.m. local time, Bangkok. Again, it's warning me that the flight is going to be overnight, letting me know it's going to be delayed, but my layover is long, so it's not a problem. And then my arrival will likely be delayed too, but it's back at my home airport, so if I get in late, I'm not worried about missing any connections. If you're happy with this flight, you click Select Flight, and you'll be taken to a summary page that is going to show you both your departure flight and your return flight. You can then use the drop down arrows if you want to review any of the details. Google Flights is also going to show you your checked baggage and your carry on baggage allowance. So here, this is great. It's telling us you can bring two checked bags with you for free, which is not uncommon for a long haul international flight. Down here, you'll see your booking options. So this is where people get confused with Google Flights. Google Flights is going to search the internet, it's going to search all the different flights that are out there by all the different carriers, and it's going to give you the information. But you don't actually book or pay for any of your flights with Google Flights. So the question as to whether Google Flights is refundable or not is irrelevant. What you should be asking is if a flight with Expedia is going to be refundable, or if a flight with Flight Network is refundable, or with the specific airline. You're not buying anything from Google Flights. So if you needed to change your reservation or you had a question about your reservation, you would either go directly to the airline or the third party provider that you booked with. The price that you see over here is again, the full round trip price for the number of passengers that you selected with the taxes included in US dollars. What you see under here is the Canadian price because this is with Air Canada, but you can ignore that. It's not the case in this example, but often by booking with Flight Network versus Expedia versus with the airline, you're going to be getting different prices. Usually they give you the airline price as well and don't ask you to call. So you can get a very clear comparison of who it's going to be the cheapest to book with. If the price is competitive, I'll always book with Expedia because they're partnered with Rakuten. I preach about Rakuten because it's a cash back service that helps you save money on the things you're already buying online. So I could go on Expedia and pay $1,000 for this flight, or I could go on Expedia, click activate Rakuten, and then pay $1,000 for this flight and get mailed a check for 4% of the cost. They are partnered with almost every store you could shop with. It's completely free. You never pay them, they only pay you. You can sign up in two seconds with Facebook and you'll get between one and 40% cash back on all of your online shopping. If you've never used Rakuten before, I have a link down below that will start your cash back balance with $30 in it. I'll also make some cash back by you using my link, so I appreciate it and it's a win-win for both of us. If you are ready to book, you can go through any of these options and select the company that you would like to book with. When you hit select, it's going to take you to that company's website and it will auto fill the flights that you've already selected. So you don't need to research for these flights on Expedia. It's going to pull it up for you onto their booking page. The second option would be to come up here and to enable track prices. Now you'll be getting an email update anytime this price changes. So if it starts going up and you see it going up for a few days, you know that you should book as soon as possible. If you don't see this track prices option, make sure you're signed in to your Google account. The final option from this page would be to share. Either you can copy this link so you can refer back to this flight later or send it to anyone that might be interested. You can share it on social media, email it to yourself or email it to a friend as well. Know that you will have this link and be taken right back to the summary page if you use it, but by the time you come back, this price may have gone up, it may have gone down, or these flights may not even still be available. So you are taking a risk by not booking it right now. Prices are going to change all the time. Another question that I was surprised to get as frequently as I did was how to add your booked flight to your Google Calendar. So there are three ways to do this. The first way is just to manually create a new event and then add in your flight details. The second way is if you booked with a Gmail account, you can change your settings to sync to events and it should appear on your Google calendars for you. I don't use Gmail, so I didn't have this option, but what I do use is TripIt. I love TripIt because it organizes my itinerary, including any flight bookings, car rentals, and hotel bookings, all into one nice place that I can access through an app on my phone or online. 
And then Google Calendars actually syncs with TripIt, so it will add those flight details and hotel deals to your calendar automatically. So simply by forwarding my flight confirmations to plans at tripit.com, it's going to build me an itinerary in TripIt, and then it's also going to put all that information into my Google Calendar without me having to do anything else. And then of course, both Google Calendar and TripIt are completely free for you to use. Between this video on booking and last week's video on searching, you should be all set to independently find the very best flight deals whenever we start to fly again. I'll leave the links for both TripIt and Rakuten in the description and on your way down there, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It's a free way to support the channel and I really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments where you will be flying to next and then I hope you'll subscribe so we can meet back here again next week. Thanks for watching, have a good one, bye.